So, I wrote a story, a short story, some years ago. Um, it's not really very long. Basically, two and a half pages, I'll show you. Two pages like this and about half. Sorry, it's all crinkly. Um, my friend kind of put it together for me. Oops. Okay, so this story is not for children. So I'm letting you know now. If you want to pause, come back to it later when your kid's not up and around. Um to listen to it. It is not a bedtime story. Um, but I'm saying that because of the creepiness. Okay. There's no uh, bad language. It's just very creepy. And uh, let me tell you where I got the idea. Listening to Enter the Sandman by Metallica. The story came to me. Um, I also wrote, I wrote this in college, so it was about uh, 2002 um, when I had a creative writing class. Um, this is one of the stories that got formed from another story that I had written and people were telling me in the classroom we did critiques and they were telling me that I needed to expand on this I needed to go into I had written a story about um, women in a uh, asylum type of a, a, a place um, sort of like one flew over the the cuckoo's nest only um, it it revolves around them talking at a 2 a.m. I mean 2 p.m. circle of crazy women is what the name of the main story is and my classmates said yeah you need to write about each of these inmates or whatever you want to call them. Um, so I started to, and this is one of the people that it came from. Um, there are several people in this circle of, it's like a group circle, and they're all talking about their different issues, but one person talks more than everybody else everybody else is just kind of sitting there um, just having problems trying to communicate all together so this is not the main character it's another one sitting around at the round group uh, talking group so I wanted to read this um, and then someday when I find the other one, the um, 2 p.m. circle of crazy ladies or something that's called like that, um, that's the first one. That is very adult languaged in there. I used at the time writing as a therapy, a therapeutic outlet. So, um, but this one was inspired by Enter the Sandman by Metallica, but I um, did not copy or do any plagiarism. Um, but the, some of the descriptions in there, you're going to catch on to them. If you know, you know. Um, but I didn't, I didn't plagiarize any of the actual terms or any of the story. It's my imagination. 
So, shall we get started now that you've probably unpaused and you've come back? Um, put those kitties, your kids, out to watch a cute movie, or maybe they've gone to bed and you're just looking for something different to listen to. So, um... I've never given voices to characters like I'm going to attempt to do here. If it doesn't turn out well, then I'm going to have to start over. Um, this is called I Will Tuck You In by me, Nikki Lucero. A dark voice. The room darkens to a small light shed from a lamp. The kind parents put in a child's room to save them from monsters. New voice whispers. We awaken, unseen, unheard, just there, in a room of a little girl with her dark room lit with a lamp on the bedside table. A lamp all cheery with snow white and the seven dwarves dancing around her, probably whistling their way to work. The light bulb is held in place by a tree trunk. And the shade itself is decorated to look like leaves. All sweet little girls have cutely decorated rooms, don't they? pink flowered matching bed linens and curtains. They all need to match, don't they? Even the hat stand and dresser have matching colors. After all, these are princess reincarnates, aren't they? Long, long ago, in a land called Blah Blah, lived a beautiful princess. Yeah, just like that. My teeth rot from talking about it. Someone unseen whispers. The girl, Janice, enters the room and jumps in bed. A voice whispers from the dark. So here she sleeps. We are here, but not here. We observe death coming or life going. We watch. We are the shadows of the room. You might think we do not have a purpose, but after this story is told, it will be known that shadows do indeed have reasons for being. We make things appear as they are not. We, we cool people on hot days. And when the light exits and the night enters, the room fills with dark hell in the form of nightmares made by shadows. The husky whisper continues we watch mom we watch mom enters room janice dear did you read your lessons for class tomorrow she asked her daughter who is in bed clutching her teddy bear and pillow yes mom i read all my chapters and answered the questions good girl she bends over the bed and pulls the blankets up to her daughter's chin. Said your prayers? Yes, Mom. Good girl. Sleep tight. It was like this most nights since Daddy left. All storybook. Everything as if it were written. A voice that sounds like the speaker rose from being buried alive. Back into the shadowy room, the whispery voice explains. 
Now that mom turns off the lamp and the night light pops on with some light to make us shadows grow. Plus the street light breathes into the room and we come to life. The hat rack is usually five feet tall, but shadows grow and grow. I can sometimes reach across the whole room and depending on what is hung on me, I can look like an alien from a strange planet or a bat. Multiple whispery voices. Look at this. I'm a grubble block. Blokes. It was the bookshelf's shadow. Do we really need names? Asked the teddy bear shadow. Of course we do. We are the legends. We are what legends are made of, like Puff the Magic Dragon, Aslan of Narnia, the Sandman, offers the gold books. Yes, even him, I say. I'm the scariest shadow of all. I'm a tropluxo nuts, especially on rainy nights. But on this night, it was different. This night, a strange shadow came into the room. One we never saw before. Something that made us wish for the day to come and the night to shove us back under the things that made us. It was different. It did not speak to us at all. The wind blew the curtains. And that is when things shifted. Us real shadows just got still and we looked like what we were a hat rack a bookshelf a teddy bear in the silence we watched in the silence we grew terrified this new shadow melted into the room black ooze grew from a patch of steamy black ice on the floor we were different. We are different. We don't want you to know this, but we are harmless. We play with your minds as you drift off to Never Never Land. After your parents tuck you in, we are there. We help with the, the movie you watched about wars or monsters. Play out parts in new production spun into nightmares directed by the Sandman. But this shadow was not one of us. This was not even a shadow. The shadows moved, but only the light moved, but only the light moved, or whatever object cast at us moved. But we did not move free will. The dark figure seemed to hunt around the room, sniffing at the hat rack for its prey. Yet no noise came from it. It floated over Janice's bed, waiting. Then teeny thin strings of shiny silvery tentacles or webs swirled down and laced like a breeze around her arms and legs. The silvery webs seemed to make take form, changing from frail webbish threads to liquid, then to thick rope. Then, and only then, Janice woke up. She was terrified. When she even thought to move, the ropes tightened. No screams came from her throat silently. Oh. In her throat, nothing escaped her mouth to alert her mom. Her mouth open, gasping silently air. Her eyes looked for, for her pillow. It always shielded her from the Sandman before. But the Sandman, who was in the closet peeking out, was just deciding to take the night off 
and closed the door like a clam in the deep blue sea. She was still clutching her teddy bear tight, but the rope knocked it with a flash of energy like lightning and grabbed her more firmly. Her face went so white with fear of hyperventilating. The ropes pulled her up to the black form hovering over her bed. Teddy was left staring up. Even his button eyes stared in horror. She was suspended just right under this form. A long tentacle came up to Janice's forehead. A beam of acid green light was aimed at her head. As it traveled from left to right, her flesh sizzled and smelled like electrically burned skin. Janice's body went limp. The opening spread apart, spread apart and red light poured out. A diamond shape came out, rotating. And as it did, the colors changed from red to yellow to blue and everything in between. Another tentacle snaked into and tapped it. The diamond opened and more glowing lights wiggled out. Small flat monitors with moving pictures began to float out and up to the dark form. A mouth-like opening to suck out the screens. They all had moving pictures of Janice's life. They came out by the thousands. Janice began to come too. She tried to struggle. I actually wished I could help, but I was a shadow. I was helpless. The ropes that held her seemed to be solid now, like metal chains. Soon her body went limp again as the last few screens floated out and up. I could see that that I could see what had just happened on the last one. The diamond darkened. It closed up. It just closed up, but closed up within itself and disappeared. The dark form dropped her to the bed. She landed next to Teddy. A pillow toppled over onto her face, covering her dark, empty eyes and the gaping mouth whose scream was never heard. The chains of silver turned to liquid, then to webs of light, and were absorbed back into the form. It then turned and glided to the window. It drifted into the night, off to Never Never Land. Janice lay there, and we looked on silent, unhelping shadows of the night. We had never seen anything like it before. She did not move. As the sunlight entered the room, we shrunk, shrunk back into the into or under things we grew from when enters the night. We are still waiting there, listening waiting to see if anything happened. Then, down the hall, Mom called to Janice. No answer. Footsteps came to the bedroom door, and the bedroom door opened. Mom's worried voice called out, Janice? The teddy bear shadow was closest to her and still big enough to see and hear what happened. He told us the rest. Her mom went to the bed, took the pillow from her daughter's face, and screamed. Her heart bled the pain of a parent being stabbed with reality of seeing her child in the state of never coming back. Teddy paused as if within his overstuffed body a heart grew and given him human feelings. She could see the frozen look. The black, glossy eyes were now turning murky gray. 
there was steam rising off her, the kind you see off dried ice. She was lifeless. No doubt that. A spire crawled out of her mouth as more steam followed. Her mom's attention drew to two small matchbook size objects on Janice's chest. Two living pictures, picture things had fallen out and were left behind. She picked up the first one was of her husband and his office assistant. Janet, Janice had walked in on him in the kitchen as they cooked up a dish. Must have been Chinese. I remember Janice held me and her mom heard her mom call it some foo fook. Mom dropped the picture, but it would be the next picture that would drop her. The next picture was the last image before Janice died. Her mom crushed like a soda can to the floor. Her screams alerted neighbors. She blacked out before they came. Teddy had always been taken out of the room with, of course, the shadow. Janice had taken great care of Teddy. She just lay there until the neighbors came. That thing took the picture things from her. Not blood, not air, but she died. We waited. Emergency people came and police. People took Janice and her mom. They took photos. They took small moving pictures that had come from the cut in her forehead, which had closed up and showed no signs of being. The night creeped into the room. We were shadows again, growing as the full moon's light filled the room with a somber yet eerie feel. Then we wondered, what would happen now? to mom, to the house. Oh, 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 what would happen to us? The shadows of the bookshelf, hat rack, the teddy bear. What indeed would happen to us? Thank you for listening. Have a great evening.